will be the same truss. You have force here, which is 10 keps. Then you have a reaction here, that's 5 keps. And you have a reaction here, that's 5 keps. With <coughs> this point being A, this joint being B, and this joint being C. <coughs> so that, that's just the <coughs> overall <coughs> equilibrium of the truss. And all it did was give you the reactions at point A and point B. Now, <coughs> we're going to look at let's say, joint A, see what happens at joint A. So, we're going to isolate this joint and then show every force on that joint. So, <coughs> we have a force here, <coughs> that's 5 keps. Then, this member, AB, I mean, I could take the member by itself and then place a force in the member as FAB and another FAB. And <coughs> see at this point it's really not known what this magnitude is. And even this direction which I'm choosing is not really known. I'm just I'm assuming that that particular member is in tension. And the moment I assume that, that's what's going to be the force in AB. Same thing with AC. If you make a choice of tension in that member, then the force in <coughs> that particular member is going to be, let's say, FAC and FAC. Again, this was unknown magnitude as well as this direction was unknown. Same thing here. <coughs> this is an unknown magnitude, including this direction. So that's just the choice to actually get the problem going. But <coughs> once you have that, then this is joint A. Your member is connecting to this joint. So there's going to be an exact force as this, but it's in opposite direction. So that's F A B. Then there's going to be another force as this, but in opposite direction. So that's FAC. So this is what we get as the free body diagram for joint A. Now once I have that, <coughs> I could be able to sum my forces X at A. We know this angle is 45. So your force equation becomes, let's say, FAC cosine 45 plus F A B as 0. Then we're going to sum the force at the same joint in y direction. So now you get F A C sine 45 plus 5 equals 0. So from second equation we get F A C as negative 5 <coughs> and you have you can divide this by sine 45 or negative 5 is square root of 2 that's in kips and the assumption was that it's in tension but it came out with a negative sign see I made the choice here this going outward but this came out negative, so I need to switch. I'll make it positive, make it 5 square root 2 kips, and compression. So that's one force. Then we go to this equation. Now, FAC will be <coughs> negative 5 root 2. Then you have cosine, which is 1 over root 2, plus FAB equals 0. Now, you, you notice this, that I when I do the calculation, it has a negative sign. So when I make the substitution, this equation, I still maintain the same sign. I mean, although I change this to compression, from tension to compression, but 
this equation was written with this being as the direction of the force. So, when you make substitution, you still have to maintain this negative. You just can't change that sign. You had the choice, I mean you could always, if you want to use this, then you have to redraw this diagram. When you say redraw, then you're going to have 5 kips here, F A B here, and this thing is going to go opposite, and you'll have 5 root 2. So, you got two choices. One choice was which I used, that is, keep the original sign, use <coughs> the original equations. That's one possibility. The second possibility is, if you want to use the changed direction, then you have to redraw the free body diagram. And you have, you not, you not only have to redraw.